We've now had the 2.4 update for maybe two days. So let's talk about the changes. We finally are able to unlock the souvenir shop after reaching level 50 on the Sakura tree. Now most of you probably are expecting to be able to get level up materials, weapon ascension materials, and weapon forging materials for any 4 stars. Unfortunately this is not the case. Besides weapon ascension materials, it's all serenity pot furnishings. As a standalone souvenir shop, Inazuma's is the weakest and Leoway's the best since it gives multiple weapon forging materials for craftable 4 stars. Let's put this into perspective though. For the first time, sigils were tied to something other than the souvenir shop, and that's the Sakura tree. If we're being honest with ourselves, this new system of turning in sigils is a much more fulfilling system. After all, we get 30 wishes, crowns, purple talent books, and a bunch of other stuff. The souvenir shop may not have been what we expected, however with the Sakura tree, Mihoyo is incentivizing exploration with beneficial rewards. Second off, we've finally been able to get to the new region under Watsatsumi Island, Enkonomiya. This region has been really enjoyable, a refreshing change to region exploration after Inazuma with all the different types of puzzles it had. This change is achieved by a more hands-on approach, by gating chests behind enemies. There are also puzzles in the form of sigils, but it's not as annoying to do since it just involves collecting the correct sigil type and the correct day and night cycle. I'd assume with Enkonomiya being such relatively new content, the majority of players haven't completed most of the quests. Let's just say it's quite similar to Dragonspine and the themes of the past, except we don't have to deal with the annoying sheer cold mechanic which is definitely a plus. On the topic of quality of life changes, let's talk about some noticeable ones. The first one to come to mind is the new changes to region fast travel. We've had the beginnings of it in the form of travel between Teyvat and the Serena Teapot. Now it's been converted to allow easier travel between Mondstadt, Liyue, Inazuma, as well as the new region. The second majority quality of life change is the improvement of crafting navigation. Before materials were listed one at a time and required more time to navigate the menu before making the specific item that we wanted. Quality of life changes are always refreshing to see, it's just a wonder that it took so long to get these. Let's talk about the Crane Returns on the Wind Archon quest, which the new character Shenha has a large role. Sometimes it's fine to just go about in a game, doing the little stuff and whatever else works your interest. Then there's times that remind you of why you fell in love with a game and why the story was so good. This quest was one of those moments. The Jade Chamber makes its long-awaited return after a narrowly won victory with the full power of the Adepti in the previous iteration of Liyue, an epic boss fight, and a reminder of the main goal of the Traveler. It was fun also to mess around with Shenha's kit. However, I still stand by in my opinion Shenha isn't worth the Prima Gems. Also, I haven't done the Hangout events yet for Yunjin and Ningguang. However, as long as they don't do the same as Goro's, with some of the focus being shifted to Yaimiko instead of remaining focused on himself, I'll have a pretty neutral opinion. The only thing I don't have uh, a good idea about is the, the non-concrete 5 to 6 hangout memories each event. I prefer the 6 since we get additional hero wits, but I guess it's not that big of a deal. I just don't really get why they keep on shifting between those numbers. Now after talking so positively about Genshin Impact for a while, let's return to the idea I presented in a previous video. Is Genshin's future at stake with 2.4? Well from a story perspective everything is fine and never was really the issue. The issue remains that Mihoyo is more interested in creating playable characters and weapons than replayable content or long length quest lines. I mean if I'm able to do the majority of the quests and get a new region to 100% exploration in less than 24 hours. I mean, that's kind of weird, and Teva just goes back to being contentless, besides trying to level up artifacts. I know Genshin Impact is a game meant to be played casually, I just guess I never played a game that took casualness to a borderline lack of effort. What do you think? Am I still being too hard on Genshin? Let me know in the comments below, and if you've enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you want to see more Genshin related content, subscribe.